You'd think that the cast of Sweet Tooth would have read the comic book series before auditioning for the show. You know, for some insight on the characters and this strange world. Well, one cast member was completely unfamiliar with it at all. Like, seriously, knowing nada. But this isn't the only shocking behind-the-scenes fact, as there are other juicy details that'll make your ear twitch just like Gus. So make yourself comfortable, grab a snack if you have your own Sweet Tooth, and let's uncover everything you need to know about this brand new Netflix hit show. When Marvel and DC Collide Fun fact, Sweet Tooth is one of the rare DC shows that debuted on Netflix. Generally, the series appear on HBO Max or The CW nowadays. Yet, this comic book property that actually finished off its run in 2013 has had its admirers for a long time. But it took a former Marvel hero to make it come to life. Who are we speaking about? Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr. Robert and his wife, Susan, are the executive producers behind Sweet Tooth and the ones who pushed for it to come to life. In a recent featurette, Robert revealed the following. We heard there was this great graphic novel series, and they just had this incredible emotional breadth of the storytelling. Susan added that they received the book almost six years ago, and it hooked them with its weird angle of this boy with antlers, fuzzy ears, and a flannel shirt. But ultimately, they found a sweet, pardon the pun, story that left its mark on them. And for them, they hope the audience is able to experience the same sort of emotions as they watch the TV show. But there was a time when the author wished it had been turned into a movie, and we'll be covering that detail next. The Sweet Tooth Movie? Much like with any creator, Jeff Lemire dreamt of seeing his comic book come to life on screen. However, he knew that having done the comic through Vertigo, a now defunct imprint of DC Comics, the decision was completely out of his hands. In an interview with CBR, though, he mentioned what his preferences would have been. He said, I would love to see it adapted. I think maybe more as a movie than a TV show. I think it could be really boiled down to the original idea I had, which was that the first 10 or 11 issues of the series could almost be the whole movie or the whole series. Everything else could be cut out. Jeff also revealed who he had in mind to play Jeopard, and you'll never guess who it was. Wait for it. Liam Neeson. I will find you. And I will kill you. Well, if you look at the source material, you can understand why Jeff would lean towards Liam. But as these things go, it didn't turn out the way that Jeff imagined, with the series first getting a pilot ordered by Hulu before finally moving to Netflix. But what does Jeff think of the show, and how it changes his source material? We'll discuss that a little later on. Practical Effects vs. CGI You'd think that a show featuring half-human, half-animal individuals would show off more CGI than an MCU marathon, but that isn't the case in Sweet Tooth. Sure, you'll see some computer-generated effects being used to bring some characters to life and to enhance the backgrounds, but the team decided there was a better way to do all of this. Susan Downey told CBR that it was the showrunner's idea to focus on the use of practical effects over CG. Jim Mickle, who's our creator, writer, director, he loves practical effects and that sort of old-school Jim Henson idea. And so as much as we could do practically, we did, and then tweaked a little bit in post through visual effects. And it really does add that little bit of magic to the series. Much like Jim Henson's creations, you can't help but get lost in how these types of effects look more realistic than CG would. And they don't look as creepy as this either. The practical effects used on the show are authentic and don't detract too much from the action on screen. Plus, they're a reminder of a time when filmmaking was much more organic and pure. And speaking of pure moments, uncovering the very special first scene. By the time a TV show ends up with the audience and neatly packaged with all the bells and whistles, it's easy to forget how it's gone through the grinder to come out the other side. Much like every other show in the world, Sweet Tooth didn't shoot its scenes in the chronological order in which they appear. Though, one of its first scenes actually ended up being a pivotal part of the first episode. Towards the end of Out of the Deep Woods, Gus runs up to a sign, looks over to Jeopard, and his ear twitches. Producer Susan Downey revealed that not only was it one of the first things shot, but it was also the moment where she knew the show was both adorable adorable and weird in a good way. She told CBR, So there's a little bit of thrill, there's a little bit of fear, and I just remember us all seeing that footage and feeling like there's something really special. Without a doubt, it certainly captures the pureness of Gus and how his heart is simply made of gold. Also, can you honestly say this special moment didn't warm your heart? That being said, it is slightly different from the source material, and we'll be chatting about that next, so don't run away. Cause I'd find you. <laughs> <laughs> Dialing down the darkness If you ever pick up Jeff Lemire's Sweet Tooth run, you'll notice that it's a little bit different from the TV show. Not only does it feature different iterations of characters, but the tone is also much darker. Like, way more. <laughs> 
After all, this was the series that was dubbed Mad Max meets Bambi to begin with. The darkness is even something that Robert Downey Jr. pointed out when discussing the comics, saying it's much more foreboding than the show. His wife Susan agreed and added, We felt we could really hold on to the themes, but make it a more enjoyable place. Naturally, it's understandable why the team went in this direction, as it'll help have more universal appeal, something that every TV show wants. Heck, Team Downey even said they want people to cuddle up on the couch and watch the show with their kids, so that should give you an inclination of the type of TV they're trying to create. But doesn't this change Jeff's original vision? And can it really be considered Sweet Tooth if it's trying to avoid the darkness? You know what? Let's actually find out what Jeff thinks about it. Jeff is cool with it. Turns out that Jeff isn't Alan Moore, who will put a hex on you if you change his work in any single way. It's the fact that Hollywood can only recycle things that have already been done. For Jeff, he understands that TV is a different medium, and some of the things he did in the comics won't work here. He told CBR, I feel like the main pillars of the story are still very much there, especially as we get further into the series. I think it's cool that it kind of struck this perfect balance between adapting what I did but also broadening the world. Jeff feels as if the heart and spirit of the comic are still alive on the show, and that's what matters the most to him. It makes sense though, since Gus remains the hope and light in this darkened world, so the core essence of what Sweet Tooth is about remains intact. Plus, a TV show doesn't exactly erase the existence of the comics either, it's merely an adaptation of it. Well, all these changes didn't mean a single thing to one actor, since he had absolutely no idea about the source material to begin with. So let's discuss that next. Neil Sandilands knew nothing about Sweet Tooth. From The Flash to Sweet Tooth, South African actor Neil Sandilands is building up quite the reputation for himself and his ability to totally disappear into his characters. As General Abbott, he's truly terrifying and probably one of the best bad guys you'll see on TV this whole year. But here's the funny thing, Neil actually knew nothing about Sweet Tooth before finding out about the audition. Like nada. He told CBR, It was a very sought after role, and I did the amount of due diligence that one can do before going into an audition. But as you can see, there was very, very little on Sweet Tooth, per se, for public scrutiny, or that I found helpful. So for me, it was more understanding of the archetypical value. Neil didn't confirm if he read the comic series or not, but he did reveal that his relationship with showrunner Jim Mickle got him even more excited about the project. The two had worked together on Hap and Leonard, and even have an affectionate relationship where they refer to each other as Bubba. Honestly, that's that sounds like the only way you should greet your fellow co-workers from now on. If fantasy is your flavor, then you'll definitely get a kick out of Shadow and Bone. And you'll definitely want to check out our video about all the behind-the-scenes secrets, including a hilarious goat named Milo. <coughs> While you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to stay awesome!